All right. Well, um, obviously, this will probably be a little bit less uh, <laughs> formal than some of the other interviews since you are unopposed in this election. So, how's that going for you, I guess? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I got to tell you, it's been nice. I mean, it's, I was just talking with um, Aaron, you know, it's, it's less stress, it's less money, it's less time. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I'm very grateful, you know, that, that some people have told me they think I'm doing a good job, yeah. you know, good enough not to run against me. So I really appreciate that. It, it, it means a lot to me and it makes me want to work harder and better. So now last year, your husband ran for office, and yep. that race was pretty contested. It was a pretty good race to watch. Um, did that give you any hesitation about running again this, this time? No. <laughs> no, I was ready, you know. I, I was ready for it, and um, no, not at all. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your background. Um, you used to teach out at Shriner? I did. I taught a little bit at Shriner. I have a master's in English uh, literature. And um, so but that's actually what brought my husband and I, my husband and me to uh, Kerrville, was he got a job at Shriner. He has a PhD in English. And so I was working at the library there and teaching a little bit for a couple years. And then um, I finished doing that and I ended up going to law school <laughs> right. in uh, 01 and I uh, graduated in 05 and took the bar I think in 07, passed the bar. And so I'm licensed as an attorney but I'm not practicing law right now. Um, but I'm really interested in animal law um, and there's an animal law conference coming up uh, next weekend and I've been going to that for the last three years. So I think when I do practice law I'll probably practice animal law. So what made you decide to get into politics? Well, I mean, I've told lots of people this story <laughs> before. Um, we, my husband and I own some property and the city came in and said, we want to put a water line across your property. And we said, well, I guess <laughs> we have no choice. So we, we said, okay. But um, then we had this contract with the contractor the city had hired. Once the water line was put in, the contractor was supposed to regrow the grass and everything because it's in a uh, erosion area and so the contractor did not do what he was supposed to do and we kept you know trying and trying and trying and he just never did it and we got so frustrated that we ended up meeting with the mayor and uh, some other people and talking to them about that and the mayor I remember he told me um, this was Todd Bach he said you know we have um, not just a legal obligation to make your property right, but we have a moral obligation. You know, we promised you we would do this, and we haven't done it. And I just thought, wow. <laughs> you know, hearing a politician say that he had a moral obligation, I was like, that's cool. And so we, my husband and I were kind of talking about it, and we're like, you know, we need to help him or get in there or something. And the very next day, Carlotta wrote an article in the paper that said, well, if you're a complainer about city politics, you need to get involved and there's a city election coming up. And I just thought, wow, that's speaking to me. And so I just threw my hat in the ring. I really did not know what I was getting into. I was very naive, but I think some people like that. They're, they're kind of like, hey, she's not uh, hardened and bitter and tainted yet. <laughs> so let's let her in. And that's how I got into it. So what's been your biggest surprise or shock? since you got into office? Well, um, gosh, I don't think I realized how much criticism there would be. I mean, I get negative emails every day and I get negative phone calls, you know, once or twice a day, really. Uh, people complaining from everything. I never thought I would live in a town where people were against sidewalks. But I live in a town where there's quite a few people who are very upset about sidewalks. And, you know, I, I just didn't realize how many people would call me and just go, I can't believe you're putting in sidewalks. And so I, I, I think the uh, criticism took me back a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's just talk about a couple of issues that have been up in the last year or so. Uh, last year, the budget was pretty tight. The city had to lay off eight people. We're looking probably into a, another year of a very tight budget. Right. At the same time, the city put a lot of money into studies and work into a convention center plan that we ended up kind of not going anywhere with. Looking back on that, how do you feel about those two 
two things? Well, I, I mean, I agree. We're in a tight budget, and, and it, it, you don't want to justify any spending that's not necessary. On the other hand, we had a citizen committee come to us and tell us, we want a convention center. We think this is important for Kerrville. This will bring in tourism. And we did our due diligence in studying that and checking out the feasibility of it. And I, I think I think it was worth it to find out all the facets of it, to study all the um, other cities that have convention centers, to you know figure out where it might go, could it work. And in the end, you know, we finally decided we just didn't have the money to do it. It needed to be privately funded. The city didn't have the money, but I. I justify that spending because we did our due diligence in studying that and looking for the possibility. And I don't dismiss, we've got all that information now on the convention center at our disposal. If somebody comes to us in a few years and says, hey, I want to do a convention center, then we know all the ramifications and everything and we're ready to go. Is this something you think will come back up in your time on the council? I hope so. I hope so because I really do still believe that a convention center would be good for this town. A convention center with a hotel. I think there are, you know, Sudi Burdett has looked at the numbers. She said, she's talked to the people. They have said they will come to Kerrville if we have the facilities. So we just need the facilities. So I hope that'll come back up. Another um, issue that's more in the forefront right now is the city hall, the new city hall going downtown. You're not really out campaigning so much, but I'm sure people are talking to you. Are you finding that most people support the decision in the direction the council's headed right now? You know, to me, it seems split 50-50. It really does. The people, I, I talk to some people who are all for it and love the idea and love um, that the Callows are involved because the Callows always do nice things. But there's got to be at least the other 50% who call me and say, we really do not think this is the right idea. Um, we don't want you to spend money right now in a down economy. We don't think we need a city hall and we don't want it downtown. Um, so yeah, it's 50-50 it's and that's the toughest decision I think I've ever made because usually all the decisions I've made, I felt pretty strongly, this is what I want to do. This is the right thing to do. This one, I had to study it and think about it and draw up a list of pros and cons and weigh it and pray about it um, for, for months when we were discussing it. And I finally, you know, when we weren't going to have a referendum or a vote um, for the people and it was left up to me, I decided to vote for it. I, I decided that the pros outweighed the cons. And everyone I talk to now, I explain to them, and some people have come around to my way of thinking. They're like, oh, there's been some misinformation now that I understand this and this and the $5 million that goes to Peterson Hospital for physician recruitment. They see the benefits of accepting the deal. So what to you is the, the main positive in accepting that and going forward with it? Well, really, I think that the, the $5 million, the Callow's, Callow Foundation gave $5 million to Peterson Hospital for physician recruitment. And that, that's just key, and that was part of the deal, really. We had sort of discussed that with them. They're like, we'll give this money if you'll take this property for City Hall. It's part of our vision. And that was really the, the what cinched the deal for me because we need physician recruitment. We need to bring in physicians. We need to make our area attractive to physicians because we have a lot of retired people here who want access to a physician right here. They don't want to have to go to Bernie. They don't want to have to go to San Antonio. They want to drive five minutes to their to their physician. And uh, we need to make this an appealing place for physicians to come. Um, you mentioned people not always having all the information um, about this, this particular, but that's true on a lot of issues. How can you as a council member or how can the city staff and the city in general get more people involved in, in this and in knowing what's going on? So, you know, that's a great question, Mark. I mean, we, we bring this up and as council, we're like, wow, you know, we're not getting the information out to people. And we still haven't figured that out, is <laughs> how to get the information out to people. I mean, we have a good website, www.curville.org which has a lot of good information on it and it's better. It's more user friendly than the old website. And you know, we've got the newspaper, but we still just don't, somehow there's a disconnect. I think in a big town, 
you'd have a PR person out there, you know, getting the, the news out there. So what I do personally um, is I answer every email I get, I answer every phone call I get, um, and I just, you know, talk with people. I go to the chamber events or wherever I go, and I'm open, you know, anybody wants to ask me anything, you know, I always, I'm, I'm pretty much politics all day, every day. Um, but that's what I do personally. But yeah, you know, the city, we really do need to work on getting more people involved because we have the, we have such quality people who've come to Kerrville to make Kerrville their home. And I'd love to go out personally and just tell them, hey, you need to get on a board, you, know, you need to get involved, come to council. So I, we need to do more of that, but we do need to work on getting information out there to people. And I'm not sure how to do that yet. So looking forward to uh, the next council, what do you think is going to be the number one priority next year and, and the year after that? Well, um, I think making our city my, my priority, and I, I think the rest of council's priority too, is making our city more attractive to tourists, more appealing uh, to visitors. And um, as the mayor says, you know, we've got this comprehensive plan that talks about a river walk, talks about downtown, historic buildings. Let's actually enact this comprehensive plan instead of, you know, doing another plan or something or just sitting on our hands. Let's get out there and actually do something. And that's what I want to do. And so the EIC, we've approached the EIC with an idea of borrowing some money on our 4B sales tax, take about 500000 from our, we, we get about $2.2 .2 million from the 4B sales tax every year, and that's for economic development. So if we take about $500,000 $500, of that and borrow $4.5 million, pay it off over 20 years, something like that, it wouldn't raise taxes or anything like that, but use that $4.5 million to improve downtown, um, to improve Louise Hayes Park, and to get our river trail started and done from Louise Hayes Park to the uh, Nature Center. I think those are key things um, that will really make this city more attractive to people. Visitors will come, they'll hang out in the park, they'll get thirsty, they'll go downtown, you know, um, get something to eat. So I think the biggest thing we need to do is, is implement our comprehensive plan, and that's river trails, quality of life. Okay. So I guess over the next uh, few weeks we'll see you at, uh, in the audience at uh, different places, but probably not up in the forums or, or uh, going door to door. Huh? It does seem that they, they don't want to waste time on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you came down and took the time to talk to us. Well, I'm glad you asked me. Thank you.